today I'm going to be discussing MK Ultra, which was a CIA program to uh, try to get mind control over enemies, people, um, using LSD. And I'm going to connect that to some new papers that have been released uh, in the last few weeks about Lee Harvey Oswald's connection with the CIA and MK Ultra. And then also uh, I'm going to touch on uh, some of the theories that uh, Jack Ruby was a uh, one of the people that they used MK Ultra on, and of course he's the one that is accused of you know killing Lee Harvey Oswald. It's, I mean it's on video, obviously he did, but um, there's some theories that maybe he didn't know what he was doing at the time. And this comes from an article entitled The CIA's Secret Quest for Mind Control, Torture, LSD, and a Poisoner-in-Chief. Uh, it's from September 9th, 2019, um, and it's from a reporter called Terry Gross, NPR. During the early period of the Cold War, the CIA became convinced that communists had discovered a drug or technique that would allow them to control human minds. In response, the CIA began its own secret program called MKUltra to search for a mind control drug that could be weaponized against enemies. As part of the search for drugs that would allow people to control the human mind, CIA scientists became aware of the existence of LSD, and this became an obsession for the early directors of MKUltra. Actually, the MKUltra director, Sidney Gottlieb, can now be seen as the man who brought LSD to America. He was unwittingly the godfather of the entire LSD counterculture. In the early 50s, he arranged for the CIA to pay $240,000 to buy the world's supply of LSD. He brought this to the United States and began spreading it around hospitals, clinics, prisons, and other institutions, asking them through bogus foundations to carry out research projects and find out what LSD was, how people reacted to it, and how it might be able to be used as a tool for mind control. Now the people who volunteered for these experiments and began taking LSD in many cases found it very pleasurable. They told their friends about it. Who were these people? Ken Casey, the author of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, got his LSD in an experiment sponsored by the CIA by MKUltra by Sidney Gottlieb. So did Robert Hunter, the lyricist for Grateful Dead, which went on to become a great purveyor of LSD culture. Allen Ginsberg, the, the poet who preached the value of the great personal adventure of using LSD, got his first LSD from Sidney Gottlieb. Although, of course, he never knew that name. So the CIA bought LSD to America, and actually it's tremendous irony that the drug that the CIA hoped would be its key to controlling humanity actually wound up fueling a generation of rebellion that was dedicated to destroying everything that the CIA held dear and defended. Whitey Bulger was one of the prisoners who volunteered for what he was told was an experiment aimed at finding a cure for schizophrenia. As part of this experiment, he was given LSD every day for more than a year. He later realized that this had nothing to do with schizophrenia, and he was a guinea pig in the government experiment aimed at seeing what people's long-term reactions to LSD was. Essentially, could we make a person lose his mind by feeding him LSD every day over such a long period? The CIA Mind Control Project, MKUltra, was essentially a continuation of work that began in Japanese and Nazi concentration camps. Not only was it roughly based on those experiments, but the CIA actually hired the torturers who had worked in Japan and Nazi concentration camps to come and explain what they had found out so that they could build on their research. For example, Nazi doctors had conducted extensive experiments with mescaline on the Dachau concentration camp, and the CIA was very interested in figuring out whether mescaline could be the key to mind control. That was one of their big avenues of the investigation. So they hired the Nazi doctors who had been involved in that project to advise them. CIA officers in Europe and Asia were capturing enemy agents and others who they felt might be suspected persons or were otherwise what they called expendable. They would just grab these people up and throw them into cells and then test all kinds of drug potions and other techniques like electroshock, uh, 
temperature sensory isolation all the meantime bombarding them with questions trying to see if they could break down their resistance and find a way to the, destroy the human ego so these were projects designed not only to understand the human mind but to figure out how to destroy it and that made Gottlieb although in some ways a very compassionate person certainly the most prolific torturer of his generation the end of Gottlieb's career came in 1973 when his patron Richard Helms who was then the director of the CIA was removed by President President Richard Nixon. Once Helms was gone, it was just a matter of time until Gottlieb would be gone. And the most important was that Helms was the only person at the CIA who had an idea of what Gottlieb had been doing. So as they were both on their way out of the CIA, they agreed to, that they should destroy all the records of MK Ultra. Gottlieb actually drove out to the CIA record center and ordered the archives to destroy boxes full of MK Ultra records. However, it turns out that there were some records found in other places. There was a depot for an expense account reports that had not been destroyed and various other pieces of paper remained. So there's a little bit of the, the records left um, that they, they attempted to destroy all of them. But there's enough like where you can just kind of piece together some of the information. But, you know, they, they, they got rid of a lot of it. So, you know, it's kind of hit and miss, and that's probably why there's so many conspiracy theories surrounding, you know, the MK Ultra project. This is where I have my effect in the mind. You know, what the CIA really dreamed of was sort of like a drug you could give to someone, get them to commit all sorts of unspeakable acts, and they wake up the next day and they don't remember what they've done. They were looking into brainwashing, they were looking into mind control, they were looking into how they could create what they called Manchurian candidates. They were trying to figure out if they could get people to go out and do things that they would ordinarily not do, like assassination. A lot of this information now has, has come from recently declassified documents uh, from the JFK assassination. And just to put this a little bit more into context, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald was only 24 years old uh, when he was shot and killed. And he had, was a former U.S. Marine. Here's a little bit of his background. After studying Russian while well, in the military, and it's thought that he was trained at the language school in Monterey, California, he was discharged with a claim uh, that his mother had very ill health, which was not true. And he was completely broke. He had about $200 in his bank account. He took a boat to England nine days after his discharge. And then according to his wife, Oswald took a military transport flight to Finland. And then he stayed in two of the nicest hotels in Helsinki. Oswald then took an overnight train from Helsinki to Moscow. Once there, he presented himself to the U.S. Embassy to announce that he'd become a defector. Embassy staff later recalled that his defection speech sounded odd and rehearsed. He spent two and a half years in the Soviet Union, and then just as fast as he defected, he returned back home to the U.S. In the series of moves from the discharge to the flight to the defection to the return, were made it at the behest of the CIA. They make sense, you know, Oswald playing some type of role. In, in the spying on, on the Russia. And the, the CIA is known to have ex explored creative use of psychedelics. And Dulles was specifically aware of these activities even when proposing some of the uses. On March 2nd, 1960, according to declassified CIA report included in these documents that were released a few weeks ago, the CIA director believed Richard Nixon, who was then vice president, on a proposed deal with Fidel Castro and Cuba. The CIA has always claimed that they never had any contact with Oswald, but they had uh, George Morenschild, who was a CIA asset. He became very close friends with Oswald in the months right before the assassination of JFK. And according to documents found in these newly declassified files, at the same time of his trip, the CIA's Domestic Operations Division ran a search on Morenschelt, exact reasons unknown, according to two documents created by a CIA analysis included in the, in the declassification. So basically, in a nutshell, the CIA 
is thought to have been working with uh, Lee Harvey Oswald when he was in Russia because you know he spoke Russian and that he was actually being a spy for the US um, and then he came back but it's not known exactly like why um, he would have wanted to kill the president but there's still you know conflicting stories on if he was the only person involved um, if they would just used him, you know, they, they wanted him to do it. Um, but all that, it, it's just kind of strange, especially when it's at the same era that the MK Ultra is going on and they're trying all this mind control stuff. And so did they use that type of mind control on uh, Lee Harvey Oswald? You know, it's hard to say. And then you have the added, this connection now that I'm going to go into a little bit where it seems like Jack Ruby may have been uh, subject to some of the MK Ultra or other mind control type uh, drugs, um, either it be during the assassination of then of Lee Harvey Oswald, and or after when he was in prison, and uh, he was found to be insane suddenly uh, by. A, a doctor psychiatrist who was also involved in the MK Ultra. So this psychiatrist, his name is Louis West. He was famous for killing an elephant with LSD when he was doing the work with MK Ultra. And what it, what happened is that Ruby had gone to trial once and uh, was found guilty, but they he found a retrial. There was you know, like some kind of legality. So they're getting ready to to retry him again and he had been fine you know in sitting in jail and this uh dr west then decides he, he wants to go in and he's going to examine him even though he'd been examined by several other doctors prior to this and after he came out uh, from examining him he told the, you know the jailers and things he, he's absolutely insane and from that point Jack Ruby had indeed had some type of complete mental breakdown that lasted into his death, that which was not that that long later because it was uh, he had he developed cancer, but he never like gained control of his mind again. So did I don't know? Did they did he slip him drugs or you know have no idea what has happened to him? So I guess uh, really what the conspiracy right now kind of building is is that. Uh, the CIA kind of programmed uh, Lee Harvey Oswald to kill JFK and then of course programmed uh, Jack Ruby to kill Oswald in that way there's no trial either way so none of, none of the information is ever going to come out some of the witnesses um, that were there whenever Jack Ruby shot Lee Harvey Oswald have said that you know when he was tackled to the ground that um, he said then you know, you know what where am i you know what am i doing that kind of thing and it, it it goes back to some other things that why he was even down there and um the story is is that because uh, he, he owned like a strip club and that one of his women were somewhere he was going to go pick him up and he always had he had like a, he was a guy that always had like a, a little dog with him you know everywhere he went and that he had left that dog in his car and he was always armed because he was bit of a gangster and that he went from there straight down there got past the security in the underground parking garage and was able to kill Lee Harvey Oswald well even his precious dog in the car doesn't really make sense if you're a lover of dogs you, you don't leave your little baby dog in a you know in a car in a hot summer day and really the problem with Oswald is that he never got to tell his side of the story I mean, obviously, he, he was involved somehow. You know, um, he shot a police officer, you know, after leaving the book depository. Um, so, yeah, he was obviously involved in some way. But was he, you know, was he set up with, you know, thinking he was working for the CIA? We'll never know. Another big takeaway from all of these uh, declassified records on the JFK assassination is that it's now been known that the CIA was aware of, of, of Lee Harvey Oswald's movements. They were aware of a threat for an assassination against JFK, but even though they, they knew of that threat, 
they did not tell the Secret Service. The Secret Service was never given that information that there was a, a credible threat against JFK's life. And, you know, had they known, uh, JFK probably would not, have, he definitely wouldn't have been in a convertible and probably would not even have been in the parade. They probably would have canceled the parade if there was that big of a, you know, a threat to his life. I mean, it really, it makes the CIA look really bad, very suspicious, and it's going to cause more conspiracy theories. But um, the reason I'm going into this now is because, uh, because of all those things that I've just been talking about, the MK Ultra, there was a committee formed that was called the Frank Church Committee. Um, and it was like to, to look up to, to see, you know, what, what have they been doing? You know, are they you know, taking advantage of, of just regular American citizens and their spying and their drug testing and things like that? And uh, they, they formed the church committee and that's that's what that committee did. Well, now um, that we've had like Kevin McCarthy, you know, put in a speaker, one of his uh, concessions he had to get to get those people to finally vote for him is to form another committee that is based off the Frank Church Committee that's called the Weaponization of the Federal Government. And so I'm going to, in the next video, I'm going to tie that in with... Um, all the, the MK Ultra, the CIA, the spying that's been going on. Uh, that you've seen all the info dumps coming on Twitter that Elon Musk has has made to the public. So I'm gonna go over all that and tie it all in together. Um, I'm gonna end this one for now because it's getting a little bit long for me anyway. And um, we'll see how it goes. I'll try to put the next one out uh, tomorrow. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this and. Please be kind to everyone. Peace out.